Hey guys, it's Winnie Harlow. I'm in New York for Fashion Week. I'm gonna show you my skincare as well as a New York Fashion Week after party beat. Okay, so the first step I'm going to do is pin my hair back because this lace is very expensive. I don't wanna get her messed up before I head out. So, I'm just gonna pin her back. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my cleanser. I tend to use my Clarisonic like every other day. I don't want to over exfoliate my skin. So now I'm gonna go in with a mask and I like to do this mask like twice a month, um, more so because I'm lazy than anything. But I'm going to mix together Nuka Honey, Aztec Clay, and you guessed it apple cider vinegar with mother in it. I kind of eyeball it whenever I, I mix this mask. My goal is to create a paste-like consistency like this so it doesn't drip everywhere because <laughs> apple cider vinegar stinks. <laughs> and I knew that, I don't know why I did that. That was not smart. I really feel like my skin breaks out the most around Fashion Week. Um, and that's because, of course, you know, we have to create looks. We gotta, you know, do runway and all that. And your skin isn't made for makeup, but prep the skin and prepare it for war, pretty much, is what I, I like to think of it as. It takes about 20 minutes to dry, so let's wait mask is done. Next step is toner. Now I'm going to go in with my moisturizer. I use Eau Thermale Aven. Ooh, French brand. And I found this when I was in Paris at the drugstore. As you can see, I spent a lot of time at the drugstore all over the world. Boots in London is my fave. And then I go on top with this Nivea Q10 Plus Anti-Wrinkle Night Cream. I use it day and night. <laughs> we're, we're out, but I have enough for today. And I feel like I really like using a night cream in a day because I don't use like an eye cream or anything like that. So, mm, it smells good too. It smells like my grandmother. My makeup artist, Vincent, put me onto these. They make your eyes really white, but they don't burn like a lot of eye drops tend to do. So I just lean to the side and uh, drop her in there. People are really fascinated by the fact that I can do that. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes too, what I like to do is use Visine eye drops on my skin, on the white parts of my skin to take the redness out. I'm gonna drop it on my skin and just pat it on. I have really bad allergies, so I always have Visine on me anyway. And I figure, you know what? If it whitens my eyes, wouldn't it whiten my skin? Cause it's the, you know, the blood vessels and stuff that I'm trying to like, what is it? Constrict, yes. That I'm trying to constrict so it should work in my skin as well. And I tried it and it does, so ta-da. Then I go in with my brows. So I really like bushy brows. I'm like obsessed with anyone who has really thick, full, bushy brows. I wish mine were fuller. We don't have to wish for it. We can draw them in. <laughs> I got my eyebrows done the first time ever when I was 13. Oh my, oh, oh Lord. Oh God. Oh no. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> Little shoelace brows, they're horrible. Oh, that's okay, you live and you learn. And thankfully, my eyebrows grew back. <laughs> I just fill in all the little sparse areas first. And I know they look super bushy right now. And I said I'm gonna do a beat. This looks like very natural, but that's when concealer comes in. The concealer is the cure. A lot of people don't notice that I have dark circles because of my vitiligo, everyone focuses on that. But I do have dark circles and if I didn't have vitiligo on my eyes, you can tell 
all here would be very dark. I get that from my mom and my dad. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> so I am going to take this Becca concealer. I love it because it's really thick and it's very, very like pigmented. So let's talk about something guys, okay. I know you guys see sometimes I cover the vitiligo on my eyelids. My vitiligo is pretty symmetrical, but on my eyes, you can see it's not exact. So if I was to do, like I'm doing today, a red eye, and I put it right here, and I put it right here, it's not gonna be even. This is gonna be a fire engine red, and this is gonna be like a burgundy. So in order to create a nice eye look, like everyone else, I create a canvas with concealer. It's not a big deal, guys. We don't have to make a big fuss out of it. I am going to cover my eyelids. I feel like everyone has like a really high expectation for foundations and makeup brands. I feel like makeup brands today are doing a really good job, but I don't think it's like super possible to put one shade on your face and just be like, voila, it's perfect. I mix foundations, I mix concealers, um, as long as people are doing a nice large range, don't be too upset if you get, you know, your favorite brand and they don't have your exact color. Okay, don't get scared. I know I look crazy right now, but it's gonna get worse <laughs> before it gets better. I feel like a lot of people ask me like, do you even wear foundation? Like, do you even wear makeup? And I'm like, sis. <laughs> I beat the face, I put on a lot of makeup. So now we have a damp sponge. I'm going to go on top with my magic weapon, this MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot. And it's kind of like a concealer, but not. I feel like this is like professional theater makeup type consistency. So I'm gonna take a brush that looks kind of like a cat's paw and I'm gonna get a lot of product on here. <sighs> Lots of product. And I'm gonna go ahead and dab that on top. I use this because I really want the makeup to stay. Okay guys, I'm really excited for this part right here. We're going in with the eyeshadow and today I'll be using my palette with Kim, KKW Beauty, Times Winnie. Oh my God, look at it, look at it. I'm gonna go into this KKW Times Winnie palette and I'm going to take this. So this, Kim collaboration basically came about from me being at fashion week and like I didn't get a show that I really wanted to walk my agent didn't want me like moping around in the room so she told me to like get up get ready we're going to eat so I got up and I went to the bathroom and I started my makeup I had this amazing idea and I brought it to Kim and she was so excited that she was like, you know what? Let's hold off on that idea because it's gonna take really long with production and everything. I'm so excited to work with you. I just wanna like work on something right now that like we can get out this year. And I was like, oh, amazing, perfect. I like that, let's do that. So she was like, cool, let's, let's figure out what you wanna create, what do you wanna do? And I was like, I really wanna do a palette. So Kim and I collaborated, I think really well on this palette. Next, I'm gonna go in with Huda Beauty this orange palette and I'm gonna go in to this orange right here. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna go into that orange and I'm gonna mix it with that orange. Deepen it up a bit. I learned how to do my makeup from YouTube. So I used to, before I had money to like pay for makeup, I used to go into my mom's room and snatch all her makeup up, bring it into my room and just like have fun. Now, I'm gonna go in with this beautiful red color from, oh my gosh, I almost said Kim's palette, from mine and Kim's palette, I can't believe it. And I'm gonna go in with like a more flat-ish brush. I'm gonna pack this onto my lid. Oh yes. I feel like this is what everybody came for, really. Um, 
I get a lot of questions about how I do my foundation and how many foundation colors I use and so many different questions about my skin. Let me tell you, I use no foundation on my vitiligo. I just don't feel like it needs it. I don't get like dark marks or anything like that on my vitiligo, so it's fine. What I do for foundation is mix these two to make me. And then I'm going to take this darker one and put it on my forehead and basically where I would contour because I don't really contour. I kind of like reverse contour. I learned that term from Jackie Aina on YouTube, but I was always doing it. I just didn't know it had a name. I don't cover the white under my eye. I go right around it. I'm gonna bring it up closer, but I go right around it because that has nothing to do with like how the makeup's gonna show up. So I just leave that there. Does take a little bit extra work because I have to like really get around it. I think people misunderstand what I stand for, and it's not that you have to be, you know, positive all the time and you have to be happy all the time and all this. I stand for doing what makes you feel comfortable and not focusing on what other people think. If you know, I meet a girl who has vitiligo and she says, you know, she's not secure enough to go outside without her vitiligo. What makes her happy is covering it. And one day maybe she will be, you know, um, confident enough to do so. But in the moment, you have to live where you're at and you can grow and you can become more confident. So what I'm doing now is I am going to take that same MAC paint pot and I'm going to conceal this brown line that I have under my eye because I want to make that like an orangey color to smoke out and again you can't see it if right here is dark so I'm going to take those oranges again actually I'm going to start with a light one I'm going to run that under my eye everyone also wants to know how I got started in the modeling industry um, basically I was I'm from Toronto. I'm Jamaican Canadian. I was growing a, a social media presence and people just seemed to love when I would do all these little modeling things. So I felt like, okay, cool, maybe I could model. And I tried to find an agency in Toronto and no one wanted to sign me because they all said like, you're so beautiful, your jaw, your jaw bones and your bone structure is so beautiful, but we just don't know where to place you and we don't know how to market you and, and what you would book. I continued on social media and just posted stuff and Tyra Banks saw me on Instagram and reached out to do America's Next Top Model, which was quite a learning experience. And I came back home and I didn't really want to model anymore. So I thought I would go to school for journalism, which is what I originally wanted to do. When I got an email from um, Nick Knight, which was crazy because America's Next Top Model hadn't even aired yet. So I was like, how did he even find me? Like he really found me the same way Tyra found me online. He emailed me personally and asked me to fly to London. I shot with Nick and he was like so impressed by how my body moved and asked me if I had danced before. And I told him I used to take ballet as a child, but I'm also Jamaican. So, you know, the yes line, can walk. Yeah. <laughs> so I take caramel first. Then I go in with custard, which is way too light, but I just use a little bit just to brighten up. The famous contour face. Because I don't contour, I do also like to put a little bit of this caramel right here because I also, if I didn't have it a Lego, around my mouth would be much darker than the rest of my face. As you can see right here, it's a little bit darker, so I'm just gonna even that out. All right, and now we bake. I don't really bake for very long because I don't want like that white cast look, which is also why I try to do my eyeshadow first so I can really just like put it on and take it off. And this is the only time I really put makeup on the white skin. I bake around my mouth. 
and I do that because I don't want around my mouth to be super shiny and the rest of my face be matte, so. Ooh, what do you guys think about this look? Is that the look? I don't wear my hair out often because I don't like putting my hair through unnecessary damage because we have to style our hair all the time being models. It's good for you to, you know, be able to stand your ground and say, listen, I'm so here for the vision that you have and I want to create that, but how can we go about it without damaging my hair or damaging my skin or whatever the case is? You have to protect yourself no matter what job you're in. So with lashes, I feel like everyone's so scared to use them and put them on. They're annoying. I like to spray my face. Ooh, yes, sticky lash. This is MAC Fix Plus. Now I'm going to warm up my skin with this mineralized skin finish. Ooh, I also like to warm up with this Fenty Beauty Caramel Cutie. I'm gonna go on top of that. I wanted to be chocolate girl friendly. So I made this beautiful golden bronzy highlight and this like iridescent almost pink. And then I'm gonna go in with that top shade and I'm gonna highlight my nose. So for my signature lip, I either use Chestnut by MAC or I use Foxy Brown by Charlotte Tilbury. Then I take this Charlotte Tilbury super pigmented gloss and I use this, I'll either use this or lipstick, but I use this to kind of blend the color of the liner into my lip while kind of creating this gradient. My beautiful topper, Aura. I'm going to take her and apply loads on top for a beautiful shine. And then last but not least, mascara. When it comes to putting mascara on your top lash, when you have lashes on, it's more important to get them on your actual lashes so you can blend them in with your falsies. I like mine to be really long and like separated. All right guys, well, I'm ready to hit the town. So thank you for watching, bye.